to Marvelous Investigates, where we talk about cases of missing people, unsolved murders, and other crime-related stories. Our mission is to bring awareness for families and educate individuals on crime-related subjects. Something recently happened in our family and it caused me to start researching. I realized that we all know about pedophiles contacting children online, but I didn't realize how bad things were until my 17-year-old daughter was contacted on Instagram. So our first project for the Marvelous Investigates channel is to put together an educational video about pedophiles who catfish children online and share the information with as many people as we can. So let's begin our discussion. Well, the internet can help our children socialize, play games, and do schoolwork, there are more evil intentions happening. Groomers, abusers, and pedophiles are all lurking in the virtual world waiting to catfish our children. The catfisher uses power of technology to hide their true identity and start friendships and romantic relationships virtually with children. The aim is to scam innocent kids online. Apart from trying to gain your child's trust, they ask victims for money or resort to sextortion. Online predators are everywhere, working hard to engage our children. They don't look scary and they don't stand out. They look like you or me or the people down the street. They are ordinary people. Online predators are mostly male. 
although we are seeing a trend of female predators. Male predators are usually married and have families of their own. They are professionals who are upstanding in the community but lead a different deviant lifestyle online. Basically, catfishers can be stalkers, sexual offenders, and murderers who can steal other people's identities while they look for children to victimize online. The information we're going to provide now may be alarming, and every parent in the world needs to hear this. Here are some statistics regarding usage of the internet. Currently, there are more than 5,000 predators online every day. Facebook removed 5.4 billion fake accounts in 2019 and 1.3 billion fake accounts in October through December of 2021. While this may seem like a lot of fake accounts, this is only what they have identified. 89% of all sexual advances towards our children take place in internet chat rooms, game site chat rooms, and through instant messaging on social media sites such as Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, Omegle, and Facebook, to name a few. 73% of pedophiles use photos of someone else rather than real pictures of themselves. These pictures normally display a male or female that is very good looking. They look like models or celebrities to entice children in. 70% of kids accept friend requests regardless of whether they know the person. 69% of kids between the age of 13 to 17 years old have updated their status on social networking sites to include their physical location. This allows predators the knowledge of knowing exactly where the child is at all times. 53% of Americans admit to falsifying their online profiles. This makes it difficult to know who is a real person and a fake person. 52% of kids have given out personal information online to someone they don't know. This can include their full name, cell phone numbers, address, name of the school they go to, among other information. 50% of kids at the age of 12 to 15 are targeted in being groomed and manipulated by offenders online. 43% of teenagers who first met someone online later met them in real life. 28% of kids chatted with strangers they didn't know. This includes kids that have already been educated about stranger danger. In 27% of exploitation incidents, predators ask kids for sexual photographs of themselves. 12% of kids have posted their cell phone number for everyone to see on social media sites. 4% of kids get aggressive sexual solicitations that include attempts to contact the kids offline. These statistics are very scary. How are we as parents going to protect our children? The internet allows predators to easily reach our children online. They begin to have an emotional relationship with our children online and later arrange to meet these kids. This is the opportunity for a predator to abuse, kidnap the child for sex trafficking, or murder the child. The predators coerce a child into producing sexually explicit images or videos through manipulation, gifts, or threats, which is a crime called sextoration. Let's get a better understanding of the pedophiles and how they can find and reach out to our kids. Predators predominantly go to online locations where they can meet kids, such as chat rooms on any social media platform and gaming sites. They also go on YouTube looking for videos where kids are posting. Per the FBI, many of these sites have webcam functionality and there are ways to turn on the webcam without you knowing you're being watched. A catfisher's social media profile will be incomplete or be completely new. Their friend list will not be long and they will not post a lot to their site. You will not find many pictures with a group of people. The pictures will all be of the individual. This is because the person who created the fake profile was able to get a few pictures of someone else. The predator will chat with you through messaging services such as Instagram, Facebook, Messenger, etc. for a short time and will make excuses not to meet you in person or chat via video chat. If plans are made to meet or chat via video chat, the predator will come up with a reason why they, why they can't at the last minute. The predator will romantically will get romantically serious with you in a very short time. They will tell you everything you want to hear, such as you are the most beautiful person they have ever seen. They want to get to know you more. They may even ask you for money and tell you they are in love with you. Everything in the conversations between a predator and a victim seems perfect. The images they are using on their fake profile will be a good looking guy or gal that will entice our children to want to talk to them. The predator will ask your child for information about themselves to find their weaknesses and they will shower your child 
child with compliments about that weakness to make sure the child feels better about themselves. The predator will ask for favors such as sending them money or to have the child send pictures of themselves. This is also troubling and we found ourselves frequently asking how can parents help keep their children safe from online predators? Here are some answers we found. As parents we need to teach our children about this at a young age. Our children should learn what kids are going to be exposed to online and what the risks are. These predators get bolder every day and don't hesitate to ask for cell phone numbers right away or start grooming our kids within minutes. Talk to your children about predators and how they can be contacted online. Don't sugarcoat or downplay the severity of the risk. Be open, blunt, and give them all the information, especially what can happen. Educate your kids about chat rooms and game site risks on the messaging services. Explain how to be aware of manipulative behaviors of predators and that these individuals will say they will get them gifts and or request nude pictures. Explain to them what to do when they receive a message like this. Make sure they feel comfortable bringing this information to you as the parent so you can report the person. Most importantly, tell your children predators do not look like scary people. They look like you and I and the person down the street. Teach your children that if they get into a situation that feels uncomfortable, they should always come talk to you and make sure they know they won't get in trouble. Make it clear that any child should never meet with someone you've met online without talking to an adult first. Make sure your child knows not to put any personal information on social media and never give out personal information when chatting with someone you have never met. Lastly, turn off your webcam when not using it. Now that we've discussed what parents can talk to their kids about, let's talk about specifically what parents can do. Parents can use screen retrieve, which allows parents to monitor their children's computer activity wherever the child's computer, phone, or tablet is located in the home, and you can monitor who your child is communicating with. Parents should set limits and group rules with their child about what sites they visit, information they post, who their friends are, and who they are chatting with. Go over the screen retriever tips before they are allowed on the computer, tablet, or phone. Be correct, proactive and use the website's privacy settings to control access to their profile page. Check the settings frequently as anytime the application is updated, the setting can change. Monitor and guide online behavior by talking with your child about inappropriate internet behavior and specific conversations they may have had that are not appropriate. Monitor your child's emails, direct messages, and texts. Don't just look at the applications or programs the child has on their home screen. Go through the list of applications as a kid will try and hide some of these from you. If you don't understand a message, ask your child what it is saying. There are emojis and abbreviations that have meaning and kids and predators use these to speak in code. If your child is using the electronic devices in a different room of, of the house, drop it on them and ask them what they are doing and who they are talking to. Make sure your kids are aware that computer use is not confidential. Anything they post online can be seen or tracked even years down the road. Help your child create their social media accounts and make sure your child's screen name or site does not include personal information and is private. Be careful when, when creating your child's username and pictures that you post. Provocative and sexy names and pictures can draw attention from people you don't want in your child's life. Be smart about what is posted and what you say to others. Information is permanent and can be accessed for years. Demonstrate to your kids how easy it is to lie on social media. Finally, show your kids the reverse Google image search and how to use it so it can help them. We are going to watch a video on how to use the reverse Google image search now so you can reference this video when teaching your kids. Image search is the ability to search on a term and find images related to what you typed. Most search engines offer it, but what if you have an image and want to know its origin or find similar photos? That's called a reverse image search. Google's reverse image search is a breeze on a desktop computer. Go to images.google.com and click on the camera icon. You can then paste in the URL for an image you've seen online, upload an image from your hard drive, or drag an image from another window. But what about when you're on a mobile device and want to do a reverse image lookup? There are options. When you fire up images.google.com on Safari or Chrome on either iOS or Android, the camera icon won't show up in the search bar. All you need to do to get it is to load the desktop version on your mobile device.
Another workaround is holding your finger on an image until a pop-up menu appears. Pick Search Google for this image at the bottom. If for some reason this doesn't work out, you can also select Open Image in New Tab. Then copy the URL, go back to images.google.com, and paste in the URL. When the results appear, you may have to click on the More Sizes option at the top to see only image results. Search by image at reverse.photos is another service you can use on your mobile device. Bing for Microsoft also does reverse image searches from the same setup as Google on desktop and mobile. Just go to bing.com slash images, tap the camera icon, and browse your photo library for the image you want to search. The latest versions of the Bing app on iOS and Android let you snap photos and image search it immediately. It also lets you upload photos from your camera roll, scan QR codes, and scan text or math problems. Just tap the camera icon next to the magnifying glass on the home screen and choose how you want to search for your photo. There are a few third-party image search engines out there dedicated to looking up just pictures, two of which are Tenai and Yandex. There are also search engines geared specifically toward helping creatives find out if their work has been stolen. Check out Verify and Pixie for options. If you prefer reverse image search apps over using a web browser, check out Veracity, Search by Image, and Reversi. Whether it's checking to see if you're being catfished via Tinder or suspicious someone is trying to scam you through Craigslist, the reverse image search is one of the best innovations of recent years. If you've ever come across an image online and wondered, well, where the hell did this come from? You know what I'm talking about. Hey everybody, it's Caleb Dennison, and today I'm gonna to show you how to perform your very own reverse image search, no matter what device you're using. Up first, Google Chrome. Whether you're using Chrome on Android or iOS, it's very easy to perform a reverse image search. Here's how. First, go to the image you want to search, then press and hold on the image until a menu pops up. In this menu, you'll see the option Search Google for this image. Tap that and check out your results. Now, you might be asking, what if I already have the image saved to my phone? It's a little bit more of a hassle, but it can still be done. The first thing you need to do is navigate to the desktop version of Google's image search. To do that, once you've made your way to images.google.com on your browser, tap on the three dots in the corner. This will open the options menu. Scroll through this until you find the desktop site or request desktop site option. Now, all you'd have to do is tap the camera icon, then tap upload an image and begin your search. Hot tip if you find yourself using a reverse image search fairly often, an app might be more of an efficient option for you. And of course, Google has you covered there too. Inside the Google Photos app is Google Lens, which not only performs a reverse image search, but it will also attempt to identify what's in the image. For example, you have a photo of a product, let's say the Sony WF-1000XM3 earbuds, Google Lens can identify the product while also providing links to where you can learn more about the earbuds. To do this, open the Google Photos app. Next, select the photo you want to search. At the bottom of the screen, you'll see four icons. You want to select the Google Lens icon. You'll see a few dots pop up as your photo is analyzed and voila, you've not only got information about where the photo came from, but also what the product is and where you can pick one up. Three different methods, but they should all get you what you need. Happy reverse image searching. Thanks for watching everyone. Now that you are reverse image searching masters, leave me a comment down below and let me know what image you're going to reverse search. Also, please like, subscribe, ring that bell, and as always, visit digitaltrends.com for the latest tech news and reviews. Finally, we are going to watch a video called The Dangers of Social Media, Child Predator Experiment. A gentleman contacts the parents of three young girls and asks them to be part of an experiment to see if their child will talk or meet with a stranger. The parents are there the whole time. What will the results be? What's up guys, I'm Kobe Person. How easy is it for a pedophile to pick up an underage child using social media? Well today we're gonna find that out. I made a fake profile on Facebook posing as a 15 year old boy. With the parents permission, I friend requested three girls ages 14, 13, and 12 years old. I've been talking to these girls for the last three or four days and today we're supposed to meet up. What we found in this video is shocking and something everyone should see. Be sure to watch until the end and use what we've learned in this video to better educate your friends and family. Hope you guys enjoyed the video.
This first girl, her name is Michaela. She's 13 years old. We've been talking on Facebook for the last couple of days, and we're supposed to meet up at the park later when her parents leave the house. I'm just waiting right now for her to get the text that her parents have left the house. So we just got a text. My parents just left. I can be at the park in 10 minutes. We're gonna go see if she comes in 10 minutes. We're gonna go right now, set up all the cameras, and uh, just be waiting there for her. So she said she's gonna meet me at the park playground. So uh, this is the closest to her house, she said. So right now I'm texting her that I just got here. All right, we'll just wait, see what she says. She said, okay, I'll be there in five minutes. She's coming, yep. Yeah. Michaela? Where are you? From Facebook. You remember? Michaela! Are you crazy? Are you out of your mind? Sorry. He could have been a rapist. He could have been a pedophile. Why would you do this? I'm sorry. Yeah, you know that I could have been anyone. Like you you talked to me for the last four days. You've been talking to me on Facebook. You just do you know that like don't you shouldn't talk to strangers especially online like I wasn't even the do I look the same as my picture could be even worse than that you realize how scary this could have been Come here. we have to talk this next girl her name is Juliana she's 12 years old and we're supposed to meet up tonight when her father falls asleep so right now I'm here with John who's uh, Juliana's father we're gonna see if she's actually gonna come to the door or not she said this was the last text LOL, I would have to wait till my dad falls asleep if you want to chill because I can't have boys over. So she wants to chill tonight, supposedly. Um, what do you think about that? I don't think she's going to open the door. God, I hope she doesn't open that door. What's your address? I pray she does not say. respond to this. Well, I can't say the address, but she just literally just texts the address. Start driving to the address close by. My dad's going to drop me up. All right, so she just said, I think my dad fell asleep. You can come now. One with the light right here? Yes. I'm outside. Come to the front door. Are you ready? Some chill. Get over here. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? I'm sorry. How can you do this? You're 12 years old. This guy's 20 years old. You could have been raped and murdered. We already lost your mother. What would I do if anything happened to you? What would I do if anything happened to you? I love you. Don't you ever do this again. Don't you ever do anything like this again. I'm sorry. This next girl, her name is Jenna. She's 14 years old. We've been talking online over text message and even had a phone conversation. So right now we have the parents of Jenna. Jenna thinks her parents are going out tonight for date night. She thinks my brother is going to be driving, so she's going to get in the car, but she doesn't actually know that it's all just me. So I'm going to text her right now. Did your parents leave yet? Yeah, like 15 minutes ago. Do you think she's going to go through with this? No way. Absolutely not. I don't even believe it's her. I okay. probably want to have friends playing around with them. What's your address? All right, is this, is this your house? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, let's go. All right. We are here, come out. You don't think she's coming out? She better not be coming out. Oh, I see your door opening. Yeah, please. Yep. I see someone. Shh. Can't believe this. Are you Daniel's brother? Yeah, yeah. Hop in. He's in the back. Over here. Get out 
gotta stop, it's your mother or father. Jenna, look, turn around. Turn around, turn around. How could you dare go into a stranger's car? What are you thinking? Just explain Give me your me. phone right now. Give me your phone now. What would have happened if you came out and it wasn't us sitting back here and there were really crazy people back here? We never would have saw you again. We've watched movies together. We've looked at newspaper articles and the news that all these things are real life situations that have happened. And we've discussed them. What, you think it's fine to go try it out on your own? But what happens if the van would have drove away and there would have been three strangers sitting in this car? Huh? What would you have done? What would we have done? When we didn't have our daughter anymore. You understand, you probably thought you were talking to a 15 year old, you didn't even know what was happening, did you? You just got in like that, you were going with everything I was saying. You understand now, so never ever do that again. I should teach you a lesson forever, your whole life. Make sure you guys follow me on Snapchat. You can see all the behind the scenes on every single video before the video comes out. Follow me on Snapchat at Kobe Person. As a parent who has been involved in the true crime community, I have talked with my kids at an early age about internet safety and safety in general. When my daughter was about 11 years old, I had her sit down with me and watch a movie about a young girl who went with a stranger and was murdered. We have had frequent conversations over the years about this. So last week when a predator contacted her on Instagram, she knew exactly what was happening and decided to play along to get first-hand proof of what happens when these predators contact kids. Here is the conversation my daughter and the predator had online. We hope the information we share will be used to help educate kids and parents all over the world. And 
help keep our children safe. Thank you all so much for watching. Make sure to share this video with your friends, families, and groups. Subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we stream or post about something new. Also, make sure to go follow us on TikTok and Twitter from, for some behind the scenes things. Have a good day everyone and we are out.